Right, we're going to talk today about uh, passing arguments into parameters. Um, so what this is all about is essentially um, you have some functions uh, within your programming code, okay? And they functions essentially take in parameters. So you can take in one parameter, two parameters, or 20 parameters, whatever you want. But the whole idea about this video is to show you how to pass uh, any arguments into those parameters and then how to use them within the function. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to take you through this first example. And it's basically where you have a piece of logic and you have two values here called A and B. So let's be, before we go into the logic go through, let's explain two things. So A and B are your parameters, okay? And number one and number two are your arguments, okay? And the whole idea about parameters is it's saying, I'm expecting A and B to come from somewhere within the code and pass to me is two values. The values can be any name, the argument names can be anything. But essentially uh, what happens is when you run the logic, it passes all the values to the parameters and the parameters then process it and turns your output. So here's a first thing, our first example. So we've got, I think it's four here today for you. And essentially what we're doing is we're saying we got a multiply number and we've got two parameters A and B with. So as I said, the logic is expecting A and B. Number one is basically saying whatever value comes in for A, multiply by two. Number two says whatever value comes into parameter B, multiply by three. Okay, and then just print them, number one and number two. And we know that our number one and our number two, uh, our number one is equal to one, number two is equal to two. So the expectation here is when we print this output, that should give us uh, one times two and two times three. So one point two is two and obviously two times three is six. And how this is all executed is obviously we take the function name and we say pass these values number one and number two up to the function and they get mapped to A and B, and then A and B get passed in here, it does its calculations, and then it prints as our output. Now, one thing to remember um, about this, in this scenario, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different going forward, is that <clears throat> because number one and number, number one and number two are static values, essentially they don't change. So what you'll see later on is certain data types actually change um, when you process the function. But that, in this scenario, number one and number two are, def are static. They're not, the values at the end of the process when the function completes is not going to change. So let's just run this logic here. Look at the output and show you what I mean. Okay, so we run this. Okay, so that's running there, right? So that has run. All right, so there's two outputs here, two and six. So as expected, we basically um, have A, it's past A, which is equal one, here, up to here, sorry, it's past one, which is number one, up to here to A, one times two is two. So there's your two and your six. And then it's gone past number two, which is two, and two is applied to B, and two times three is six, and there's your six, okay? And the final thing is I've printed out number one and number two again. Now, as described there, essentially you can see number one and two are still one and two, okay? So basically what you can see is that number, the values number one and number two have not changed. But what happens if they do change? Well, that will be coming up shortly. So let's have a look at the next example. Just do this. Um, do here, let's go down here. And we'll come with this out. Okay, so our next example, right? So previous one, we had two static variables passing arguments into the parameters A and B. But what happens um, when you have a data type or a piece of data that's actually mutable, which means it can be changed, okay? Well, lists are one of those examples. So lists can be updated and changed as you see fit. So the rule of thumb is if you use something like a list um, to be passed in uh, to a parameter to be processed, that actual list will also change uh, in the output. But let's show you, take it to the logic and let's show you that. So here we have um, a function called add number, and it's basically saying A, okay? So it's expecting one parameter to come in A, okay? And basically then we have a number here called three, okay? And that's gonna be added to the list through this, okay? And then basically we're gonna print A. 
So essentially what it's saying is take in A, which we know is these arguments here, one, two, basically append to A number, which you know is three, and then print out A. So at the end of this, you should see the values of one, two, and three in the output. But remember, and we'll show you this now in two seconds, when the actual uh, value of A is changed up here in the function, it actually goes back then to the original uh, argument that was passed in. It says, oh, hold on, that came from a list. Lists can be changed, so that list also changes. So let's have a look at that code there now uh, very quickly. Let's process this. I'll just do this. All right, so there you go. Perfect. So what we're seeing now is, in this scenario, um, we have printed out A. Uh, so the first scenario is we passed in one tune, which says, uh, that's part of A, okay? Said so add three onto it and then print it out. So this first line is one, two, three. But if you look now, we've also printed out number one. Now in this scenario, number one is also has been changed up here as part of this logic. So it's been changed down here. So one thing to note is that when you're looking to use parameters and you've got something that's feeding into the parameter, you need to be careful about what you use, uh, what objects you use, if they're mutable or immutable. Because depending on whether they are or not, the actual original value or list, or if it's a mutable object, will also change. So in the first scenario, they were immutable, so they were static, they stayed the same. In this scenario, what we used was mutable, meant to say to change. So let's move on to the next step here of looking at args args and key K, kw args as well and see how we can use them in our logic to with in conjunction with parameters to process some data in a function okay so we'll do this okay so all right so the first one we're going to look at is we're going to look at args here right so let's actually mute actually do this here first sorry all right, so what is args, right? So I think it's it's important to understand what um, the symbols of args use when you use it as an argument, what it actually does. So ARGS um, is an actual, is just a parameter. But if you use the multiplication sign in front of it, it basically means that when something comes in if it has one value or it has 20 or in this scenario three values take them all in and process them so it's a very very handy way of actually give getting the function to process your data process what you want without having to define them in uh, one or more uh, variables um, like we have done in the previous examples so here we let's just go to the logic so here what we have is DEF, which is just to define your function, add numbers, okay. Um, I've copied down add numbers, that's probably, yeah, that's just add numbers. So we have uh, obviously the multiplication args, we have result equals two, and we're basically saying for x in args, which args is one, two, or three, result times x, return result. Now in this scenario, when it, when it works and completes, it actually, what it does is it adds all the numbers together. But let's, let's show you this in an example. All right, so if we print, we run this, should I say, okay? So the answer here is 12. So what is going on? So essentially what it's doing is it is feeding in one, two, and three, okay? It basically says, okay, I can have this, it, the, the program says understands I have one or more arguments. So let's take them in each process, one at a time, and then at the end, add them all up and give us our solution. So essentially it's taken two by one, which is two, 2 by 2, which is 4, and 2 by 3, which is 6. 6, six, four, six and 4 is 10, and 2 is 12. And that's what we get down here in our output. So it's a really, really handy way if you don't want to define multiple vari variables um, as individual, um, sorry, multiple arguments as individual variables, you just basically define what you want here. It will pass it up here. This piece of logic here says, hold on, just expect one or more, and when they all come in, process them, and basically spit out the result based on what the function asks for. But what happens if you 
want to do this, but you want to define what um, these actual values are, give them a name or an alias. Now there's a reason for this, and that's what you use that is called, the same again, it'd be two multiplication signs, K, W, A, or G, S. And we're gonna look at that now, just directly below and show you how it works and why you would use it. Okay, so let's do this here first, all right? Let's go down to the last one here, right? So let's just uncomment all this, right? Right, so in the previous example, we used one, two, and three, but what happened was it was just literally passed in and processed. Now, that's all well and good if you have particular values that you just say, they're always gonna be those values or you can add to them from time to time based on some business requirement. But let's just say, we're gonna first of all do this, but then I'm gonna give you another scenario where basically this that might be helpful, but you may be able to get around it by using this logic. So again, what we're doing is we're going to add all these numbers, but in this scenario, it's the double multiplication here and basic keyword args. What it's basically saying is, hold on, expect an alias value or for your variable, well, shock argument, to be actually present. Whatever that value is assigned, bring that value in and process it. So it's basically saying, hey, so the, look for a value on the left. In this instance, it'd be A, B, and C. And it says, all right, we have A, B, and C. Bring in then for A1, B2, and C3. Process it and give me a result. Now, let's just process that first, but I wanna go through something. So again, it gives us the same answer and it gives us a value of 12. But there's actually something to point out here and how this differs from the previous uh, example of uh, multiplication args is say you have a equals to one, but say you actually had something here that you wanted to call a say value two or something like that. Say that's a, a an argument equal to, say that's a variable that gives you an argument. You could do that. So that could be in another, that could be in another uh, function or somewhere else in your code and it's passed in here. So the handy way about doing this is, you could have multiple, you could have a lot of these different values passed in, basically used then into the logic in the parameters up here, in this parameter, processed, and then it gives you a result. So we could call that, so that's value two, and we'll call this a value three, and say, value one, whatever. And these will just pass in the arguments to this logic. The logic processes as part of the function and then spits out the result. So that is a very quick introduction into parameters, how you use them in Python, how you can pass value to the, to the parameters uh, via arguments. Um, showing you a couple of different examples, I think it's four here. There's probably more, a couple more that you probably come across. If you see them or you know them, why don't you leave a comment and let us know. It'd be good to share the knowledge with everybody else. Uh, thanks for coming along today. Really appreciate you taking time out to look at this video. I hope you've learned from it. Plenty more coming up soon. And we're constantly expanding the channel. Currently at seven, just over 700 subscribers at the time of making this video so if you haven't subscribed really appreciate if you could help us build the channel get it out to more people and get more people looking at the videos so talk to you soon take care thanks for stopping by and look after yourself